my bilge pump running so obviously I was like what's going on are we taking on water just ran and ran and ran even though um, there was no water in it but it seemed to kind of continually leak water back in just a little bit at a time and it would kind of just pull that water out and leak it in it looks pretty gunked up in there in the impeller so I've been reading a lot of things saying maybe you just need to clean it out just a bunch of hair and uh, so it's kind of a positive thing is I may have found the issue so this may have just been stopping the impeller um, from turning. So it was getting the signal that it had water and it was just continually on, but it wasn't actually pumping anything out. The build was running very, very like lightly though. And then when I pull the float up, then it would run stronger. Inside of my float, there must be a short. This is a little bit old. This came with the boat. So there must be some sort of a short is what we came up with that was allowing the current to weakly go through to run my bilge and then when I pull it up it would get a strong current. I hooked up my new float that I got, wired it up and then the test was just to touch this to my battery and if the bilge didn't automatically start running then it was success. Only if when I lift the float up it started to run. You hear nothing? Can you hear it? <laughs> So we have fixed the problem. The previous owner had the wires going just, just like this. He had them wrapped around the battery terminals. So I got heat, heat shrink connecting terminals. The thickness of this wire is 14. I got a 12 gauge. I had the wires connected wrong. This white wire was connected to the positive terminal. Red wire was connected to the negative terminal. Normally that'll blow blow a circuit or um, in most cases in bilge it'll just run it'll run backwards. Originally I hooked this to the positive and I hooked this to the negative and then I'd pull the float up and nothing would happen. So I just kind of experimented and switched the wires and pulled the float up and it worked. Replaced the float, then I replaced the bilge and, and then when I had a brand new bilge, brand new float and the same wiring, it wasn't working. Near the end, my problem was that the bilge was working but whenever I would put on the, the hose, it was like a very weak trickle. It wasn't powering it enough to get all the way up and out of the boat. It was just kind of trickling out even though it was working. So. That was when I decided that I'm, I'm just going to change all the wires because it seems to be getting power but it's just weak. And it was flowing out even though I had the positive to the negative and negative to the positive. It was flowing out. So it wasn't flowing backwards and it was getting power. So I'm a little confused to be honest. You found the funk. Now you'll have to swing it. It's working now. Got a new float. I put the old bilge on, took the, the new bilge back, and I used that money to get all the wires and uh, the heat shrink butt connectors and the heat shrink connecting terminals. So Devin is a guy that works at West Marine, and the last three days he's been amazing. He's awesome. I mean, today we were sitting on the ground just talking about wiring. He, um, you can see I got that grease that he recommended to put um, on the ends of the wires to connect. And um, I learned a lot about him. He's been struck by lightning. He's been electrocuted hooking up um, lighting in the inside of a house, um, all kinds of things. But he was so helpful.
swing. Surrounded by ladies. So we've walked about two hours. Of course, we got a little lost because I'm leading the way, so that always happens. Took a little more time off. So now, uh, no showers. We didn't get to cool down in the beach. <laughs> and we're walking back the way we came. You're welcome. We're not really sure if we're even allowed out here. But Marina just couldn't keep walking any longer without cooling down. So who am I to tell her now? That's it. Listen to the band. Show us your spoon. One bite. Just one big bite. Com licença. Excuse me, ma'am. Listen and repeat. Com licença, senhora. Com licença, senhora. Ora. 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 Senhora. 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 Women in Brazil are usually addressed with senhora unless they are very young. 
How do you say ma'am in Portuguese? Senhora. Senhora. <laughs> say English. 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 <laughs> English. Here's how to say you understand. Just listen. A senhora entende? A senhora entende? A senhora listen entende? and repeat part by part. Wait, understand. Entende. 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 Dia. 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 Tomorrow morning we're going to have gust of 41 knots. And uh, it's starting to slow down come Friday. And then it's going to go right back up to the purples. And this has been the third day straight of this, this uh, wind onslaught. And Marina's handling it well. It's real dark. You can't see her right now. Living in a highly populated anchorage does present its challenges. The strong currents are always changing direction. Also, the winds are changing direction and can be strong. Add those together and you get a spinning boat that's getting pulled in every possible direction. There are many other boats anchored around you, swinging differently depending on how they're anchored or moored. Also, you have to look out for already set mooring tackle. Sailboat. So the first thing you do is you drop your main anchor and then you drift back and then once it's once you once you set and you've let out five to one at least seven to one would be ideal then you pop it in reverse and you back down on it real hard and until until you set that anchor once that anchor is set, then you let out with your hand, you just let out twice the amount of scope. So you'll be way back here. And then you want to drop your secondary anchor. Bloop. Whoops. You want to make sure you don't drop the whole thing and you want to keep the line up on the boat there. So you drop the secondary anchor. And then with your hand, you just pull in on your main anchor and let out your secondary until you have pull all the way back to your um, 5 to 1 scope on your main anchor and then this anchor will be back this way and this one will be here so once you're in the middle then you pop it in forward and you rev it and you set this this secondary anchor here then you tie um, a rolling hitch with this secondary anchor here using the secondary anchor line you tie the rolling hitch around the main anchor line this is all knowledge gained out of the handbook of sailing which is constantly being referred to and then pull both lines up and put those onto your cleat and then you put a weight that goes about at least 10 feet down so it's down below your keel and it holds both lines together and below you so if you spin around like this your uh, keel does not catch on the lines it also helps you from um, swinging in a large radius it just keeps you on a small little radius here which is ideal when you have tons of boats anchored all around you you don't want to be swinging on one anchor like this really far in all directions not to mention um, you know that's you're more likely to if you go from this direction all the way to this you can possibly flip your anchor upside down and go slipping away the weight is about a 25 pound lead ball hooked to a pulley and this pulley is attached just above the rolling hitch to force it downwards. You attach a line to this weight and bring that on the deck and it's also attached to a cleat. So you'll have three lines attached to your cleats.
These are the tales of Boab.